Hey, it's Don with the Nearly Historical Railroad YouTube channel thing. Working on the staging yard. Gotta cut some gaps in the frogs. So, let me go show you what we're doing with that. Okay, so right here we've got a little structural issue. There's like five boards that kind of connect together here. So my dad's working on uh, getting something behind that and tightening that all up. So right there uh, is the back side of that little issue. So we're gonna, he just took a little block off of there. He's gonna put a bigger flat board on there like that and uh, tighten all that down. So while we were gone, my dad uh, soldered all these feeder wires on right next to that leg. Remember, this is sitting on its side, so. But he got all those fire, fire, got all those feeder wires soldered on. Uh, so here, here's another set of feeders that he's got soldered on. So there's actually uh, three sets of feeders set up that he's got soldered on. They're not connected to the bus line on the other side. Just so we can troubleshoot gaps and stuff for the moment. All right, so here's the top side of the yard. And what I've done is I've stuck pins I've stuck green pins in where I need to cut gaps, yellow pins where we need to add a feeder wire for a frog uh, in case we need it, which we probably will at some point. So, I don't know, I guess I'm gonna go start cutting. Yeah, what if it was just like a... All right, so I cut gaps. More probably need to be cut. Um, using the Dremel, it, it kind of makes a bigger gap than I want, but it sure is a lot easier than trying to use a razor saw, which gives you a nice fine cut. I'm sure other people have better ideas, but I'm using the Dremel. Probably gonna go back and fill the gaps with styrene and glue or something, so that's how we'll deal with that. Um, yeah, gonna keep going, see where I'm at now. So one of the things I'm using to kind of figure this out is uh, this little guy here, which has a, just a simple continuity thing. It's got a green light, which means these two rails are electrically connected somewhere. So could be that turnout that's feeding it, could be something down this way, but that's what I'm kind of using to try to track that stuff down. So I was perusing an army surplus store once and these were out in the backyard. What are these? Well, I spent $5 for them. It is 500 little micro switches. They're all clean. They all seem to work. They just don't have little tabs on them, but that's fine. I think I'm down to 490 of them, so, you know. Hopefully we're got enough. So I did this first to kind of come up with the concept, figure out how to do it. 
That one there is the first one I did. Did that one because it's more complicated because it's got a block of wood in the way. But I got that to work. So that black micro switch is going to be used to power the frog. We've hooked up the frog wire to it. And that works. A little piano wire to connect it mechanically. Remember that left part of that is kind of a switch and that's used for the signals. So that is actually working. Let me show you it with the test light. So you can see you got a little test light up there now. On and off. So it's gonna flip the polarity from the one side of the bus line to the other. The red to the black in our case. And route power to the frog. So you see the green light up there working. So we got one, two, three done. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more to go. With all these micro switches, I feel like I'm working on a pinball machine. I think that makes me a pinball wizard. Where's Scott? I'm not gonna lie, it's very tedious. It's kind of a pain to do, but it should save us quite a bit of money, a few hundred dollars and not buying, uh, you know, them little frog juicer things. So, we'll see how it works. If they start to fail later on, we can just cut the wire off and add a frog juicer in easy. Okay, so it's kind of a tight area to show you, but um, my dad got another row, like the third row of feeders soldered in over here and also the uh, three frog wires that I uh, got stuck through there on those micro switches um, and also I think I got all the gaps cut where they need to go okay my dad made a little progress while we were gone so let's go take a look at that stuff real quick all right here's our Kenosha pass Palisades, Buena Vista area. So my dad got more of the fascia board up. So he got that more secured and he's got all this now coming around this corner by the roundhouse. So that is good, looks nice. And on the fascia board, he actually got this cut out for the water or whatever to go through there. So, this is looking good. I actually intend to build a uh, retaining wall here, and I actually have the wood to do it. I just haven't gone around to doing it. But that would be nice to get that in, because then I won't have this big ugly hole and kind of get better progress on this. Also, I just noticed this, um, but my dad is, looks like he's put some more hydrocal or something over the top of this to thicken it up and make it stronger. Um, on this part, we're gonna, you know, probably put rock molds on that, so we need it to be a little stronger. So that's good. I think he's gonna probably paint it also pretty soon. My dad also kind of thickened up the uh, plaster on this right side, the white stuff here, and he's gonna paint that soon, I think. That is a good question, Eric. Ed. Where is Scott? I'm gonna give him a call here. Check in with them. Hello. Ah, Scott. It's Don. Hey, Don. <laughs> so, uh, Long time no here. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. So I'm editing my video, and uh, and uh, one of our viewers, Eric Hall, has asked, "Where where have you been? Where are you at?" So uh, I just thought I'd call and check in with you. See what's going on. Huh, nothing much. Just uh, all work and no play. Just relaxing here. Just got done finishing up the day and getting ready for another one. Yeah, haven't seen you out in the train room for a while, so. Yeah, I'm sorry. I really want to hang out and wanted to hang out with you guys and say hi to everybody. I do miss everybody. Wonder how Eric's doing. Yeah, no, I, th I think he's doing good. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah. So just busy with life, huh? Yeah, 
now. I wonder if uh, I have a good question now. Oh yeah. Uh, I wonder if he's gonna if he has to fix any stuck flippers. Oh, he is the, like the pinball wizard. So. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay, well, I should get going, but uh, yeah, we'll check in with you later. Be cool when you uh, can come back out to the train room, so. Yep, sooner than later, maybe next week. Oh, oh, that'd be cool. Okay. Yeah, hopefully. That's, that, well, that'll be the plan. How's that? <laughs> okay, sound, that sounds good, yeah. All right, we will catch right, you later well, then. All right, buddy, I'll talk to you later. All right. Have a good one. All right, bye. I want to thank Eric of IMRRO.com YouTube channel. So he does model railroading stuff. Uh, thanks for popping into our little video here and having some fun with us. So thanks a lot for that. Check out his YouTube channel if you haven't already. And uh, now for the conclusion of this video. Alrighty. So I spent a lot of time, and my dad, spent a lot of time on the floor. Uh, Dad got more bus line and stuff hooked, like that hooked up and all those feeders soldered up. So, you know, it's our little journey of uh, going from DC to uh, DCC. So anyways, perhaps a little bit shorter video, but that's okay. Got the way train's running. Anyways, I, I don't know what I'm saying now. H hit the thumbs up button. I want you to hit the thumbs up button. Leave some comments. Nice ones. Okay. All right, we'll uh, catch you later. Bye.